The Meizu MX-4, despite some issues in translation from the Chinese market, turned out to be a pretty solid device with quite a bit to offer. But with a pro version, Meizu has upped the ante in just about every aspect. Does it provide a real upgrade not just from the original, but for the budding user? Well, let's find out, because it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is my review of the Meizu MX-4 Pro. The MX4 Pro takes on the same aesthetic of the original, with a look that is a bit like the iPhone 3GS of old, right down to a home button found on the bottom front. But this time around, it is quite larger. Mostly due to a 5.5 inch screen, this phone is just outside the realm of comfort in one hand, though small bezels on the sides of the screen certainly help its case. As already stated, the home button up front is the main addition here and has a great tactile feel. Push it down and you'll be able to wake up the phone, but underneath the surface is a fingerprint scanner that we'll get into in the hardware segment. Curves on the side include the volume rocker on the right side, though the power button is at the top. There's just no way around it for most Android users. The top located power button takes a little bit to get used to. The back is removable and sports a nice non-glossy feel. Underneath the cover, you won't be able to replace the battery though and ports for the headphone jack and the micro USB charging port are on the top and bottom respectively, with the latter also accompanied by a bottom facing speaker unit. And all of this is held together with a nice silver lining via a metallic frame. Ultimately, this is a phone that isn't too flashy, but still manages to have a look all of its own. In the hand, the smooth plastic does have a tendency to slip about, which sometimes exacerbates the accentuated curves of the MX4 Pro. I didn't have that many issues keeping my grip on the phone, but a little extra care was taken when trying to perform the hand gymnastics needed to get around the screen. Our look at just how much the Pro brings to the table begins with a display that is actually beyond Quad HD. As Meizu has done in previous iterations, the aspect ratio of the display is just a little bit off kilter, and thus a bit more resolution in the shorter edge can be squeezed in. As a result, 1440p essentially becomes 1536p. This small bump up in resolution is certainly not really felt in regular usage, but the Pro manages to be on par with the many other Quad HD displays that we're seeing in current gen smartphones. That being said, however, this display is quite a nice performer. Despite the muted aesthetic of the default Fly Me OS theme, the colors still look pretty vibrant and stand out due to some good contrast. What the theme does really well to showcase is the sharpness of this display, as 546 pixels per inch do well to accentuate the edges of Fly Me's pixel art. Where I had an exceptional time with the device was during gameplay, as even the older textures and colors of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic were made quite enjoyable on the MX4 Pro. Viewing angles all looked good, and in broad daylight I had few complaints. And with Gorilla Glass 3 covering this panel, there should be better protection against typical scratches. Meizu has returned to their original supplier for processing packages, Samsung. And in the Pro, they opted for the pretty tried and true Exynos 5 Octa that is backed by a Mali T628 and 3GB of RAM. I had few issues with the performance of the MX4 Pro as the Flyme OS showed really nice movement through its elements and apps. Multitasking proved to be a good experience despite its more simplistic interface, but tapping in and out of two applications over and over again was a very quick experience. Again, my main enjoyment came from gaming here, as Knights of the Old Republic was nice and smooth at the default settings. I pushed the graphics performance further by maxing out the settings, but even then the game was still playable. It was at normal settings, however, that the game never missed a beat. To start off the hardware section, we'll talk about the speakers found on the bottom. While we always harp on rear or side-mounted speakers compared to front-facing units, Meizu has managed to make the sound experience on the Pro quite compelling. Sound is not only more than adequately loud, the sound stage is actually quite robust, bringing richness and body to mids and lows where plenty of other speaker units simply fail. And with the Hi-Fi enhancement option available in the settings, the same great sound experience is available when plugging a pair of headphones in. The good news continues with the fingerprint reader under the front home button. This is a press type of reader, meaning you just have to rest your finger on top. What makes this reader so good, however, is the fact that you can wake the phone with that same button. Press down, wake the phone, keep your finger in place, and the phone is unlocked. Meizu claims that you can go from prone to working in about half a second, and while I haven't actually timed it, it certainly feels pretty fast. You can also set fingerprints to unlock apps and other portions of the phone. 
Ultimately, it's a very reliable fingerprint reader. And I know that because for a few days there, I actually forgot what my unlock pattern was. During that time, I just kept using my thumbs to easily unlock the phone, and that was more than good enough. What was actually a bit of a sore spot for me was in the connectivity. Now, I completely understand that a phone from a foreign market might have some trouble connecting to the mobile networks here in the West, but using my T-Mobile and AT&T SIM cards simply did not get me faster than 3G internet on here, and even then, connectivity was spotty at best. I'm sure that versions of this phone that are made for the West will definitely fare a lot better. That was just my experience with this particular phone. And in battery, I also had a pretty uneven experience. A phablet-sized 3350 mAh battery is in the MX4 Pro, and while it should be able to make the phone last quite a while, I simply didn't really have that experience. Now to begin with, having mobile network connectivity issues made it tough for me to have real day-to-day -day usage on here and be able to test the battery life on there. But I still had some interesting incidents. Mainly, overnight when I had this phone basically on standby, as you can see here, it drained the battery overnight. Now it's something that happened more times than not, and I thought that it was because I had apps running in the background, but even when I fixed for that, I still had a couple of instances where the phone would be dead in the morning when I left it, maybe around 75%. I will say that more recently this hasn't been an issue, but it happened more times than is negligible. Otherwise, I have been able to get a solid day out of the Pro before getting down to single digits, but we have to remember that this is without the high-speed internet as a factor. A powerful 20.7 megapixel rear camera provides very solid performance in the MX4 Pro. Large pictures are par for the course here, as the front-facing camera sports a little more power too at 5 megapixels. The app provides a number of different modes and settings, mostly found by swiping side to side on the viewfinder. Modes from panorama to slow motion video to even a fully manual mode are available. Settings in the auto mode include HDR, which does a pretty good job of improving color output on a shot, though without the higher saturation, this effect is essentially what night mode produces. The macro mode proved fun to use, though I found it a little odd that the auto mode doesn't automatically activate the macro focus based upon the shot. Basically, if you aren't able to get focus on a close subject, just swipe over to macro and then you'll probably be able to get it done. And for self-portraits, there is the Beautify mode Asian market phones are so known for. Here's a shot of me normally, and then a shot of me as you can see via screenshots, showing that all the settings are at max. Videos in 4K can be captured and they look mostly good, though a lack of stabilization might make them finicky at times. And slow motion video can be captured at 720p resolution at a speed of 100 frames per second, exported out to 25 frames per second. Picture quality was actually quite good for the MX4 Pro, as details were very well captured and colors looked appealing when you could capture them correctly. I say this because I found exposure and white balance in auto mode to be a little bit jumpy. You have to be sure that what you want to get is what you see in the viewfinder. Nonetheless, when you can get a good shot off, you can be certain it's going to be pretty good. Even in low-light situations, the camera manages to bring about a pretty nice result. And if you needed a boost, the HDR and night modes will do well to enhance the scene. Just keep your hands as steady as you can when doing so. My only real gripe with the camera was a bit of a slow autofocusing time. The Pro certainly isn't the worst performer here, but it also isn't the best either. And finally, in software, we get the Flyme OS, a different take on Android that is a bit more simplistic than its more well-known competitors. What you see is what you get in this interface, as there is no app drawer, and all icons thus have to be arranged in folders for organization. You may have noticed by now that there are no capacitive keys on this device, and this is because contextual soft keys appear when needed in applications. To go backward, the home button is your friend. The notification drop-down has a slew of different options available, and in the settings area, different panels are used to navigate the many options. The only real hidden area in FlyMe is the recent apps interface, which is accessible via a swipe up from the bottom of the screen. Thankfully though, all of this is customizable via a theme engine that, as Meizu was so nice to point out, will be mostly in Chinese for the moment. Speaking of translations, there are a few holes in the text of the device, as obviously there was room to fit the many elements of Chinese characters, but when translated into English, the phrases might be too long for these menus. And also, some of the literal translations themselves can be a bit uneven. That all being said, I actually enjoy what I see in the Flyme OS. It might be really simplistic, but then again, that's something I do tend to like in operating systems. The soft keys on the bottom in that contextual bar remain one of my favorite parts. But another bright spot was in the keyboard, where you could actually swipe down from one of the letters in order to get to the numbers and symbols easily rather than just holding down. 
I never felt overwhelmed by the elements, though that could change if you have too many applications installed. When converting the price from Asia, the phone comes in around $400, so we wouldn't be surprised if the Western retail price would be closer to about $500 unlocked. It's not a bad price point, but plenty of other phones in the Asian market have compelling experiences to offer and can rock similar or even lower price tags. In this new year, it remains to be seen just how much better the phones get in a market our Western viewers may not be so familiar with at the moment. And for that notion, the Meizu MX4 serves as a good example of what growth we're seeing out of China. Even just a couple weeks ago at CES 2015, we saw a few new high quality but affordable iterations from Chinese companies and the trend looks to be on the rise. Meizu is in the thick of that with a phablet offering that manages to be powerful but accessible at the same time. Its design choices aside, the shell is just a casing for all of the power that is found underneath. A quad HD display, good performance, an enjoyable sound stage, and an above average camera all make the MX4 Pro a package we do hope to see in the West pretty soon. Being fully outfitted for Western markets would certainly alleviate the problems I had with my particular units. Well, it might not stand out that much, but dig a little deeper and you'll find yourself a fun and powerful phone in the MX4 Pro. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review of the Meizu MX4 Pro. Its larger version of the original brings even more power underneath, and it happens to be an enjoyable experience because of it. It is a pretty good phone, but we don't know when it's going to come to the West, but you can stay tuned and see if it does here at Android Authority. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and drop us some likes on our videos. And remember to head on over to AndroidAuthority.com once you're done with all of that, because we are your source for all things Android.